Brudo, welcome to China, welcome to Beijing. And uh, as you know, we have just uh, completed this uh, major event, the 10 years anniversary of the BI initiative. So many leaders from other countries came to Beijing, stay in this hotel. So what's your take on the whole about BI? And how do you perceive this uh, whole event as well? Yeah. Well, it seems to be doing well. Uh, it is not dead. Uh, we read in a lot of uh, Western media that it was dead. I was very worried because I wrote a book on the Belt and Road and I, I want my book to survive. <laughs> but it seems to be changing. Um, I always thought it would be an evolving process with crises, with transformations. Seems to be a lot less about infrastructure. In my book, I already wrote that infrastructure would become secondary. By the way, I think there are conditions for the Belt and Road to succeed yeah. that are prior to infrastructure. Yeah. They're about politics, culture. There has to be cultural and political understanding for the infrastructure projects to succeed. So what I noticed this time is that there was a enormous focus on culture and politics and a lot less on concrete and construction. And from Chinese point of view, you know, uh, we feel that with the Ukrainian crisis, uh, somehow the EU or Europe as a whole have been somehow, you know, misled by the United States, the Chinese biased view. So were the Europeans' own uh, interests? Uh, you know, the other day I met an Italian friend in this forum, I said uh, one major problem for Europe is uh, immigration from the Middle East, from North Africa. So with Belt and Road, you know, we try to help, you know, develop Africa and the Middle East. As a result, there will be less refugees to Europe. So why EU or EU members uh, don't want to join BI? I know the American pressure, and Italy is talking about uh, quitting the EU. I think it's uh, something goes wrong here. <laughs> My personal view, what's your take? Well, uh, BRI was interpreted, and I think correctly, as a project of power, that it would increase Chinese influence. I don't think Chinese officials and intellectuals deny this, uh, that uh, the BRI will increase China's influence in the world. That is part of the purpose. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, resistance in Europe uh, to the idea that uh, this project could increase China's influence. And a process of geopolitical competition started. Europe now wants to have its own BRI. These are the dynamics, and I think are going to be very difficult to avoid. Uh, each major bloc wants to have its own projects. Mm -hmm. I think that's what explains why Europe is uh, not joining the BRI. Uh, we want to have our own BRI. Yeah. You could say that China was successful in the sense that it showed the whole world the importance of a project like yeah. this. Yeah. But it will, I don't think it will be able to convince uh, yeah. European countries to join. Uh -huh. And um, uh, anyway, uh, now over 150 countries have joined right. and uh, the total investment has been more than one trillion, some people say even two trillion dollars, both Chinese and non-Chinese. So the projects, despite all the challenges, opportunities on the whole, are uh, moving up and this trend, I think, will continue. Now, I read your articles about uh, Eurasianism, about uh, civilizational state, about rise of civilizational uh, discourse around the world. So could you say a bit on your view concerning civilizational state, civilization discourse? Why at this particular juncture more talk about this? Yeah. I think uh, as human beings, we are profoundly dissatisfied with the idea that history is finished, mm -hmm. that nothing new will happen. Uh, and it's much more appealing to think that different parts of the world have different visions and that there is a dialogue, there is a learning process, and that history continues. So the sense that liberalism was the end 
and everyone would join and everyone would have the same view uh, is a very frustrating view, uh, which is slowly disappearing. We now have different projects in different parts of the world and the Chinese project is a project to be taken very seriously. One can agree with certain elements of the, of the Chinese project for the future and one can disagree with other elements. But I think uh, the sense that civilizations and the difference between civilizations is a good thing is very important. And second, the sense that civilizations are fundamentally forms of human thoughts, mm -hmm. yeah. of practical human thought. Yeah. And so there is no reason for civilizations to clash. Usually we have a clash of nationalisms. That's a different thing. But civilizations should not clash, they should communicate. This is why I've been interested in the, in the Belt and Road from the beginning yeah, yeah. Um, and why I wish the Belt and Road all the best mm. because a China that is open to the world, that is curious about the world, yeah. is a much better China for everyone than a China that would be closed. So why should we, why should we be critical of a project that is fundamentally uh, a way for China to yeah. open up? Mm. Uh, that is, uh, I think, where we are. Of course, it will be very tricky to navigate yeah, yeah. this world where there are disagreements. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in the end, it's a better world than a yeah. world where we all yeah. agree. Yeah.